Okay, hello everyone. This section is titled Symbolic Arguments. And I think this is mainly what we've been building up to in this chapter. We're going to be using truth tables to kind of test someone's argument. If someone's arguing with you, and it has to be kind of a certain kind of argument that we'll see in a second. But yeah, if someone's arguing something, you can tell whether their argument makes sense or not with a truth table. So it's kind of interesting. And uh, definitely takes time used to. It's very complicated at first, but I think once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple. So okay, think of it, think of it first thing. A basic symbolic argument is of the form, okay, they have one premise, a second premise, so it's kind of like these two things are supporting my conclusion, and therefore conclusion. Like, I guess if I said, um, all dogs have hair, and, let's see, all animals with hair are mammals, therefore, my conclusion is, dogs must be mammals. That's kind of what you're looking at, I guess, something like that. That maybe that might not be a bad idea to write something like that down, just to have an example. Let's see, so like, for example, um, all dogs have hair. I don't even know if that's true, probably not. And then two, all animals with hair are mammals. That's not true either, I don't think. But you know, bear with me. Just the first thing that came to my head. Oh, this would be an example of a bad argument, right? Then, therefore, and we'll see that the symbol with these three dots means therefore. Therefore, all dogs are mammals. So, you know, I guess if those two statements were true, the one and the two, then the conclusion must be true, right? That makes sense. So, okay. If you want, you can always phrase the argument as, if premise one and premise two are true, then the conclusion is true. So that's kind of what we were just saying, that if all dogs have hair, if that was true, and all animals with hair are mammals, if both of those were true, then that would mean that all dogs are mammals. I mean, there's, there's no way to, other, you know, to get out of that. But symbolically, you could say, premise one, remember this is the symbol for and, premise two, if those, then conclusion. So if blah and blah, then conclusion. That's how you can kind of get it more symbolic, like instead of just all words, it's now symbolic with symbols and letters and stuff like that. Um, so let's see, we say an argument is what we call valid if the conclusion follows from the two premises. Like the one we wrote, I think it's valid, even though statement one and statement two, two, yeah, like the example. But even though statement one and statement true might not be true, it's just the fact that if they were, then the conclusion would be true. So when you say valid, I guess you're not really testing whether the premise 1 and premise 2 are true. You're testing whether, if those were true, would that imply the conclusion, really. And then invalid is the opposite. We also call it a fallacy. Invalid, um, if the conclusion does not follow from the premises. Or sorry, from the, yeah. So I, w I wouldn't say that the argument we wrote above about the dogs is invalid. Even though maybe not all dogs have hair and not all animals with hair are mammals, those might not be true. But the fact that the conclusion would follow from those two makes it valid. So it's, it's confusing. It does, it's not like everything has to be true about it. It's that if these two things were true, would that imply the conclusion? If so, then it's valid. If not, then it's invalid or a fallacy. So this is the, the, uh, the route we'll take to determine whether an argument's valid or not. We'll do kind of like we've been doing in previous sections. We'll, we'll assign letters to each basic statement of the argument. So, you know, probably P, Q, and R. Or maybe just P and Q. Then we'll rewrite each premise and the conclusion in symbolic form. And then we'll think, well, you know what? This argument really is phrased this way. Premise 1 and premise 2 imply conclusion. And then we'll create a truth table to see whether this is valid or not. We'll just see um, if the final column contains all T's. If there's even one F, it's, it's not valid or it's a fallacy. Let's go ahead and try it. Yeah, just keep keep all that in mind. And I know it seems like a lot, but if you if you do these examples, just keep referring back to these steps. But I think once you do, I don't know, two or three of them, you'll kind of be like, oh, okay, I get this. I don't think I need to look back at those steps anymore. Um, but let's see. Here we go. Example one, part A. It says, try to see whether this argument's valid or not. So I'm gonna try to give symbols to each of these simple statements. So the first one is here. If I can get my child to preschool by 8.45, okay, let's try, P is that thing, I get my child to preschool by 8.45, let's say 
that's statement P. If that, then I can take the 9 a.m. class. Okay, let's say Q, statement Q is that I can take the 9 a.m. class. Okay, okay. So it looks like premise one above. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't number them, but let's say this is premise one and this is premise two. If I can take my child to school by 8.45, then... That sounds like P implies Q is really what's going on there. And then statement two, if I take the 9 a.m. class, okay, that's Q, then I can be done by 2 p.m. That's not a statement yet, so we'll have to call that something new. R. I can be done by 2 p.m. Okay, those are our statements. So then Q implies R must be that second premise. And the con conclusion, therefore, what does it say? If I get my child to preschool by 8.45, what was that? That was P. Then I can be done by 2 p.m. That was R. All right, so remember they said that the argument, the total argument they're making here is going to be premise 1 and premise 2 imply the conclusion. But what do we have? Our premise one is P implies Q, and premise two is, I'm looking back over here, Q implies R, that implies the conclusion, which is P implies R. So that's what we're trying to test. So really all that was just to see what the final column in our truth table will be. And I'm going to create a truth table, and my final column, I'm trying to build up to this big argument here. It might take a while, but it's, as long as you're careful, it's worth it. So we've got three letters, P, Q, and R. Let me see here. Do, 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 do. Got it, got it. Okay, there's no negation, so I don't need that. I might just start with what's in the little parentheses there. P implies Q is on the left, little parentheses. Then we have Q implies R. And the conclusion is P implies R. And then I guess... If I link two of those with an AND, that'll make what's in the parentheses. P implies Q, I already have a column for that, but if I add the AND, Q implies R, that's something. And I think after that, if I add anything else, it'll just be arrow, something we already have. So I think it'll, this will be the total argument here, if I can fit it all in. That guy implies P implies R. That, you know, that long, like on the exam, you can just say, just draw an arrow, say this thing goes here, you know? Or you could just say like total argument or something like that. You don't have to write the whole thing out if you don't have room. Whew, but we'll build our way up there. It seems scary, but that's what we've been preparing for. Okay, there are three letters, so that means there are going to be eight rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's make sure I extend that all the way over. Alright. We're getting there, we're getting there. Um, what do we have now? So again, we want to fill in P, Q, and R. We know how this goes. Four trues for P, four falses for P. Q is going to be two of each. True, true, false, false. True, true, false, false. And then R will be one of each. True, false, true, false. True, false, true, false. Alright, now this, the interesting stuff begins. But, I mean, you really have to know your stuff. This should be second nature by now. If not, you should probably study a little more of the old stuff. This is a, a conditional, so we're looking for when the thing on the left is true and the thing on the right is false. So one is P true and Q false. That would be here and here. Anywhere else? That's it, huh? Otherwise, this guy is true. Alright. Same thing with the next guy. We want to know when the thing on the left is true and the thing on the right is false. So one is Q true and R false. That would be here. Where else? Here. Otherwise, I don't see that happening, so it must be a true everywhere else. And right, now we got P implies R. Same kind of thing. When is P true but R false? Let's see. Actually, the second one, I see that happening. And then the fourth one, I see that happening. Otherwise, I don't see it, so it must be true everywhere else. Alright. The next one has the word and. So remember, yeah, this, you really have to be familiar with AND. When is AND true and false? When is the implication true and false? Let's see, AND is only, let's see, it's only true when both are true. Both of what? Let me see. Try to get another color. So I want to know, when is this thing and this thing both true? Where are those? That was 
this column and this column. One of those both true, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, let's see what they did that. Where is this here? Those are both true here, okay, got that. And then down here, and here, and here. Let me make sure. Yeah, that's the only place where both are true, otherwise at least one of them is false, I believe. Alright. And now what we're doing is we're taking what we had in the previous column, so that guy, an implication, something else. So remember, when there's an implication, or sorry, a conditional, you're looking for when is this true, so I'm just going to be looking for a true or a T in the previous column, and a false in the column for P implies R. That was the one right before it. So I want to see when is this guy true, and when is this guy false. That, that'll be when the final column is false. Um, you know what? I don't see that happening. There's no, there's no time at which this column is true, and this column is false at the same time. Is there? No. Alright, so it's always true. Oh, sorry. Yeah, always true. Alright, that means that it is a valid argument, because I see all t's in the final column. If there was even one false, it would be invalid. Okay, good stuff. So we got a couple more of these. Let's see. So part B, I'm going to try to, it really helps to really assign letters to these things. Oh no, sorry, not P. Yeah, yeah, sorry, P. We're good, we're good. We will go for a bike ride. That sounds like a good one. It will be P. We will go for a bike ride. The word or, we will go shopping. Okay, that must be Q. I guess and you don't have to call these P and Q. You can call them whatever you want. S for shopping and B for bike ride. Whatever. Alright, and the very last guy, R. Well, it looks like there is no R, huh? We'll go for a bike ride, we we'll go shopping, that's all they're talking about. Huh, okay. So now I'm going to say, the first, these should be numbered actually, sorry. If they're not numbered in the book, just it probably helps to number them. The first one, we will go for a bike ride, that was P, or, okay, symbol or, we will go shopping, that was Q. Number two, we will not go shopping, that's negation of Q. And the conclusion is... We will go for a bike ride. Okay, that was just P. Alright. And the next thing, this is the hardest thing to remember that premise one and premise two together imply conclusion. That's the argument. What I'm trying to, gonna try to do is say, alright, what was premise one now? Premise one was P or Q. That's gonna go here. Premise two is not Q. That's gonna go here. And then conclusion is gonna go here. So if I rewrite that, premise one is P or Q. Premise 2 is, well, negation of Q. I don't know if I really needed parentheses around that, but that's okay. Conclusion is P. Alright, now we just need to make a truth table that builds up to that as the final column. And we'll see if that column has any falses in it. I'm not sure why I made this so big, but... <laughs> there's only two letters here, P and Q. We only really need four rows. I guess these will be big rows. One, two, three, four. Do true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. And those don't have to be in that order. I think we talked about that. Because, you know, we're looking for, does the final column have all T's? Or does it have any F's? And, you know, it doesn't matter what order they're in. If you see an F, it's not valid. So that, that's really, it doesn't matter what order these are in, really. Okay, let's try to build up to this. I see a negation on Q in the argument. So I'm probably going to need that somewhere. What else do I see? Um, P or Q, I might want that. And I might as well link those with an and to get what's in the big parentheses. P or Q and not Q. I think after that though, if I add anything else, I have the entire statement, so that's about it. P or Q and not Q implies P. Okay, or you could just say arrow, this thing, or argument. Let's see, so not Q, that's the next column we're looking at here. Where are we? This guy. That would be the opposite of Q. So Q was true, false, true, false, we want the opposite. False, true, false, false. I'm oh, sorry, false, true, false, true. And the next guy is an OR statement. Remember, OR is only false when both are false. And both that we're looking at are the P and the Q. Those are only false in the very last row. Otherwise, at least one of them is true. And the next column is an AND. Here we go. Remember, AND is only true when both are true. And by both, let me see, let me color code it. Both I mean 
P and Q, that was this guy. So I need to look for when is that true and not Q is true. Looks like right here, huh? Oops, let's see, I get a different color. Okay. There we go. This is the only time that both are true, otherwise at least one's false. Which if you, if you remember from previous sections means the AND statement is false. And the very last guy, all I did was add an implication. So something implies something. So I'm looking for when the thing on the left of the implication, or the thing on the left of the arrow is true, and the thing on the right is false. So what's on the left of the arrow? That's the previous um, column. So I'm looking for when is he true, and the thing to the right of the arrow is P. That was ver the very first column there, way in the beginning. I want to see where that, the, the previous column is true, and the very first column is false. Does that ever happen? No, huh? Nope. That would be the only time this is false, so it must be all true. Badly. Alright. So it's kind of confusing, yeah, again, because this last guy was an implication. Remember, that's only false when the first thing is true and the second thing is false. So I look for which column was this in. I'm looking for when he's true, this guy here. And then when is the thing on the right false? That was the first column. And I didn't see any times where that... This previous column was true, and then the first one was false, so it must be a valid argument, because I see all T's in my last column. Alright, we got one more of these, and then we should, I think we're doing pretty good. You know, I should have done part B before I did part A, because part B was a lot easier. Sorry. Um, let's try this guy. It is snowing, and I am skiing. Or, sorry, I'm going skiing. I guess I'll say statement P is, it is snowing. Statement Q... I'm going skiing, I guess. And then what else? So that, I guess I can start right now. The first statement given there, I can number it if I want. It is snowing, that was P. And I am going skiing, that's Q. Alright, statement two. If I'm going skiing, that was Q. And then I will wear a coat that is not the statement yet. I better make it one. R. I will wear a coat. Ah, that was odd. Okay, and then the conclusion is, if it is snowing, which one was that? Then I will wear a coat that will wear a Alright, I think that's about it. So remember, the argument is, premise 1 and premise 2 imply the conclusion. Now what I have to do is replace premise 1 with what was in this first thing here premise 2 with this guy, and conclusion with this guy. So it's P and Q. Wait, P and Q? Yeah, okay, and then and Q implies R. That should imply the conclusion, which is P implies R. Alright, we'll test that guy. Ah, and this is, unfortunately there are three letters, which makes it way more complicated. And who knows how many columns we'll need to try to extend it really far. So we'll need eight rows below because there are three letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see, I made made it too long. How am I gonna build up to that? I would I would add any negations, but there are no negations. So I'll do what's in the, the very inner parentheses first. P and Q, I see that guy. I also see Q implies R in some parentheses. I see you know what? You could do huh? You can do the P implies R now, or you could say, you know what, I can link the previous two um, columns with an AND, and that'll give me what's in the big parentheses there. Alright, and then I need what's in the little parentheses to the right of the arrow, P implies R, that guy. I think now that I have that, the only, the only thing left to do is link the previous two columns with an arrow, right? If I have an arrow from this to this, that has, is the entire statement. Total argument. Yeah, if you run out of room, don't worry. You could just write argument or, or put an arrow from this the argument to this column. And I think we've kind of built up to it. So let's do what we were good at. P has four trues. Q has, or sorry, and then four falses. Q has two of each. True, true, false, false. True, true, false, false. And then R is one of each, back and forth. True, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Okay. Now we're ready to start filling in, and we're getting we're getting closer. So we got an and statement here. P and Q. 
Remember, that's only true if both P and both and Q are both true. So right after that, it's true, true. But after that, I think at least one of them is false, so it's false from there on out. And the next column is an implication. So remember, it's one thing implies another. We're looking for when the first thing is true and the second thing is false. When is Q true and R false? Let's see. I'm not the you know, if, if I actually had a piece of paper in front of me with this on it, like an exam, I would actually have my fingers on the columns, so I don't, you know, my eyes don't stray to the wrong column. One is Q true and R false right here. I see that's happening. And then down here. Otherwise, though, I don't see that, so it must be true. Alright, now what are we doing? Next column is an AND. And it's an AND with the previous two columns. And remember, an AND is only true when both are true. So I'm looking at the previous two columns and trying to see when they're both true. The first one has that going on. Not the second, not the third, or the fourth. Yep, from there on out, it's all false. It's just one true. Kind of sad. Okay. Now where are we? P implies R. So that's another conditional. We're going to look at when is the first thing true and the second thing false. Got to look back, way back the first and third columns. Let me see. I want to know when P, P is true and R is false. Where are those guys? Way out here. P, when is P true and R false? Hmm. Okay, so the second row, the fourth row, that's it. Alright, so the second and the fourth row, those are the only times this thing is false. Second and the fourth row. Two, oh, sorry. Oops. Second and the fourth row. Otherwise, it must be true. <laughs> Alright, total argument. What do we do with the last guy? So remember, the total argument is this thing implies this thing. So it's just the previous two columns we had imply the other. So I guess, and that's, you know, we're looking for, with a conditional, when is the left thing true and the right thing false? That's what we want. The left thing true. So when, when this is true and this is false, yeah, when this guy is true, and this guy is false. And that never happens, I don't think, does it? No. So these are all true. Oh my gosh, I didn't mean to do that, but all these examples are all valid. Oops, sorry. I just want you to know that they're not always all valid, okay? <laughs> we just kind of got lucky here. These were all valid arguments. Yeah, but if any of those in the last column ended up being an F, even one of them, then it's not valid. Whew, all right. Now, last example here, we got, I think it's, it's very similar, they're just gonna, they're trying to uh, step it up one notch. So they're kind of, instead of phrasing an argument in lines, you know, premise one is on, has its own line, the next line's premise two, and then a bar, <clears throat> and then therefore a conclusion. They're just writing it as one big, long statement, I guess. So really, you can just say, okay, here's, here's the argument. The baby is crying, but the baby's not hungry. Well, that's statement one, let's say. Baby is crying. I'm gonna just paraphrase, I hope that's okay. But, baby's not hungry. I know how that goes, oh my god. Okay, then the second one, I guess, the second sentence must be the second premise. If the baby is hungry, then the baby's crying. That's a true story. Baby's hungry, then baby's crying. Although I found if you, uh, if you distract the baby with some bright lights or something, they'll stop crying and forget what they were doing, even if they're hungry. Well, that's my little genius anyway. <laughs> just kidding. And then it sounds like the conclusion, therefore... And therefore is just always going to be there. That's part of the argument. That's just that symbol. But after therefore, the baby is hungry. Okay, that's it. The baby. It's hungry. All right. So what are we gonna do? I guess we'll say we gotta say what's P, what's Q, and what's R. If, if there is an R, I'm not even sure. So I guess we'll say P is the baby crying because that's the first thing I read. Baby crying. What else? Baby's. Well, the first statement says baby's not hungry, but the not is gonna be a negation. So I'm gonna say baby hungry. Um, I think that's it though. Huh? That's all we talk about: hungry and crying. That's it, alright, so now we'll try to make this argument into, um, write it in symbols. So what does the first premise say? Baby is crying, 
Okay, what was that? That was P. But baby's not hungry, though. It's not Q. So I don't think the word but, we don't have a symbol for that. But let me see, is but equivalent to a symbol, or a, a word we already use? I think but is equivalent to and or or. Which one is it? When I say baby's crying, but baby's not hungry, does that mean baby's crying or baby's not hungry? Or does it mean and? Baby's crying and. I think it's and. When someone says baby's crying, but the baby's not hungry, they're saying that both of those are true at the same time, right? The baby's crying, but also the baby's not hungry. So it's just a different way to say and something. That's why I wanted to make sure to do this problem, just because they use the word but and it sounds different, but it's really the same thing. You know, you just have to think about which what is it equivalent to in what we already know. Okay, and then statement two. If baby's hungry, which one was that? Q. Then, okay, arrow. Baby's crying. And the conclusion, baby's hungry. That was Q. Alright. So the total argument. Let's see. Remember, the total argument always goes... Total argument. Goes premise one and premise two. Together imply conclusion. So my premise one here is P and not Q. And, okay, premise two was Q implies P. That implies conclusion is Q. Alright, so that's what I want to test with some kind of truth table. There's only two letters here, P and Q. At least it might be, well, at least a short truth table from top to bottom. And so we've got P and Q, I'm going to say... What else? There's a negation on Q, I might as well put a column for that. Um, I guess I can add AND in there, P and not Q, to make what's in the first parentheses. And then what's in the second parentheses, Q implies P. And I think at this point I wouldn't jump to the entire statement yet. I'm gonna just add the AND, the big AND in the middle of this guy right here. So it'll be what's in the first parentheses, P and not Q, and Q implies P. Alright, now if I add anything else, it's the entire statement. So I'm just going to say total argument. Or you can actually write it out if you want. Alright, I want, let's see. I only need four rows below those guys. Because we only have two letters. True, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Let's do that. Alright, then the next column is negation of Q. Negation of Q is the opposite of Q, so I'll just do the opposite of what I just saw in the previous column. There. The next column we have is an AND. Remember, AND you're looking for when are both of those things true, because that's the only time it'll be true. And those things are in the first and third column. So I'm looking in the first and third column and seeing when they're both true, that's only here. Otherwise I see at least one false. And this implication in the next column, Q implies P. I'm looking for when is the first thing true and the second thing false that's the only way this will be false. I have to look at it backwards. One is Q true and P false. That would be here. Yeah, otherwise I see something else going on. The next column is an AND. And for an AND, again, we're looking for when are both things true. Because that's the only time this will be true. And what are those things that are on the left and the right of the AND? They're actually the things in the previous two columns. I'm looking for when are those both true, only here. Otherwise, at least one's false. Alright, the total argument, what does that add? It adds an implication, so it's the last guy implies Q is the total argument. So since it's a, a conditional, I'm looking for when is the thing on the left true, which is the previous column. So I'll be looking for a true in this column and a false in the column for Q. Looking back, that was way back there. When is this guy true only once? And Q false. Oh, there it is, right there. False, but otherwise it's true. Alright, so even though the last column only had one false, that still makes it invalid. Well, yeah. I'm glad we actually got one invalid, that was good. <laughs> but okay, I think that's enough for now, huh? If this seems really complicated, I know, you can always watch this video again or, or look up... Uh, symbolic logic arguments on YouTube or something, if you want a different kind of explanation. Or the book has a video, if you look up, um, let's see, if you go to the website, the My Math Lab, and then chapter contents, and then go to the section, there should be a video if you want just, a, I guess, a different viewpoint, or just explained in a different way, or more examples. 
But it definitely also takes you trying your own. I think you really have to try these on your own to get it. And if you struggle, that's normal. Don't feel bad. We all struggle with math. Don't worry about it. But let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for listening. I know this is kind of tedious stuff for some people. But I appreciate you listening and being patient. I'll see you at the next one. Have a nice day.